Okay then, in order to get started with uh, vector graphics, why don't we start with something very simple. Let's uh, use a simple shape, uh, stylize it a little bit, get used to some of the effects, and make a very simple uh, iconic, uh, let's call it a logo. Let's start with using the shape, simple circle. Now you can, when you first put it in there, hold down the shift key, grab the corner, and you can constrain the proportions. However, over here, if you go into format, you can also go to arrange and then click on this constrain proportions. And that lets you, no matter what happens, unless you unclick it, keep it all in the same proportionality. Command Z to get it back where it was. And let's constrain those proportions again. I'll put it down in the center, make it a little bigger here. Now I prefer to go to mall back to style to change the color. Whenever you put an, uh, a shape in, it starts with advanced image fill. I like to change that to advanced gradient fill. That lets us play with a little bit. Uh, you can add another one here to change the colors and the gradients as it changes throughout. Click on this one to make it in the center. You can even grab this little center piece here to change where it is in terms of light hitting the object. I'm gonna put three fingers on here, drag that over. But maybe I don't want those colors. Maybe I want to change this. So I'll ch click on this one until it's highlighted, as you can see. Maybe I want that to be hot pink, say. I don't know. I don't want this anymore, so I'll click on it, drag it down. Poof, she's gone. So now I've got these two colors to play with. You can make them any colors you like, frankly. You can also make them go sideways or from the center. This right here is kind of cool. It lets you go to the opposite of what you've done. I don't know, kind of like that. Maybe a little softer by adding another one. Up to you completely. We'll go with this for now. Now, if I go up here and I click on, oh, I don't have text up here. So I'm gonna go back over here again, double click or control click to customize toolbar. I'm gonna add text. That's, that's a good one to have. Done. All right, let's add some text to it. Let's call it, um, Click on it, my logo. Now, when you're in the text here, what I like to do is I like to keep the text style left aligned at the top. Just a personal preference. Put it right in the center like that, like those grid lines there. If I click on it enough, I get all of it and I can change the font as well. Now I've gone ahead and I've already added a bunch of different fonts that I've downloaded from the internet. You can find them either at um, Da Font or Font Squirrel, places to get some really good logos for free and use as you see fit. So I got this hippie movement logo. If I do Command Plus, I can make it larger or I can go over here and be faster by double clicking and typing in numerical values, enter. 150 seems to be pretty good. So now, I could have it like so. If I click on one thing and I hold down the shift key while I click on another one, they're now grouped, at least for the time being. If I wanna keep them grouped, I can go command shift G, which groups them. Now they always move as one thing. Again, up here in a previous tutorial, I showed you how to get ungroup or group up here. No, no, it's all right. I kinda of like it. Are they aligned? Well, they're grouped up, so I need to ungroup them. So let's find out by using those same grid lines. Oh, there it is absolutely aligned. I don't have to do it by eye. So there you have it. There is another one. There's a, um, an image that I have. It's my new, my new, uh, my logo logo. I want to use it somewhere. I can do command shift three, pardon me, command shift four. I get these crosshairs. I can click and drag anywhere. And now I can use this somewhere else. Command shift V allows you to import images from your Mac. So if I went to uh, the desktop where that has been saved and double click on this, oops, that's not it. Let's try that again, Command Shift V. Sometimes it takes Mac a little while to find out what time something was made. So I'll find it here or here, there we go. Double click and it's in there. But what's with this funny little white thing that, that makes it harder to, for me to layer. So back to what I said was the most powerful tool, Alpha, click on this. That allows me to go through, get rid of all that stuff right there. And now, I can put it anywhere. I can change the size, it goes over top of things, anywhere I like. I'm now gonna get rid of the original ones. 
And you can do some other stuff with it as well. You could um, add a drop shadow. You could make it really blurry. You could even, if you wanted to, uh, change the color of that shadow. Got kind of a purple thing going on here. Let's make it kind of purple. Yeah. Always make sure you click on to select the image, otherwise you don't get these. Notice when I click on the white space, it disappears because now I'm, now it's giving me a chance to format the slide itself. If I click on this, it gives me formatting options up here in my logo to do as I please. Lots of different things. Play with it. Oh, that one's kind of nice, right? That, I've never actually done that before. That gives you a drop shadow. Blur 20, offset 10, opacity of 70. Looks okay, don't you think? Now you can use that any place you like. And that is the end of this tutorial. Please have a go.